Hi everyone, very good afternoon guys. I hope I am audible and visible to all of you and uh, if yes, then we can start with this super short session that I've planned for all of you on a Sunday afternoon basically to get you back on track to studies in case you have gone off track. So uh, I'm Dr. Preeti Sharma and I'm your educator on the platform of An Academy and uh, if all's well with the AV then we'll start right away without any further delay. So a quick yes or a nod in the chat box would work very well right so just let me know i think i've got a confirmation so we can start what is the session going to be how short and why have i called it super short session because uh, we had two similar sessions earlier also where we had five images five questions today i've changed it a little i've got you a total of seven questions in terms of mcqs but alongside each each question will also be labeled with another image so there's going to be a combination of images and mcqs combined in today's class Let's get going with question number one, something that we definitely expect in the exam. Let's start reading. There's a 25-year-old female who complains of recurrent rhinitis, nasal discharge, bilateral nasal blockage for one year. Uh, she has a history of asthma and allergy. On examination, there are multiple ethmoidal polyps with mucosal thickening and secretions. Biopsy taken shows multiple hyphae with dichotomous branching, typically at 45 degrees. And on the basis of that, all of you are giving me an answer of aspergillus fumigatus, which is right. So the buzzwords over here were definitely dichotomous and 45 degree. That is what helped me make the diagnosis, right? So what are they talking about? Firstly, what do we mean by the word dichotomous? Dichotomous refers to some of the other tree formation, like from one branch, there are multiple other branches that are coming out. So this is a typical dichotomous arrangement which I can definitely see over here how from one branch further branches are coming out. This is aspergillus. Further, if you write aspergillus, I think everyone remembers the mnemonic for aspergillus because this is also something that has been coming every year in every paper very good so aspergillus me how do we say what is the branching a tells me that it is going to show you an acute angle branching means there's going to be a 45 degree branch that is seen and i can see that it's all at 45 degree that is happening out here along with that spe will tell me that these are going to be septate hyphae means i can see lines inside them of course yes i can see lines and lines and many many septa that are present inside them so that is the question that came in one of the recent exams also it is acute angle branching it is going to be septate hyphae and it is going to be dichotomous branching and all of this is aspergillus because what am i going to compare it with i will always and always compare it with mucor mycosis because mucor is going to be opposite if aspergillus was acute angle branching mucor mycosis is 90 degree it is 90 degree branching that i can see it does not have any septa. It is aseptate. It is totally clean that I can see over here. Also, guys, which of them is thicker? What do you think is going to be? Someone said obtuse. Huh? 90 degree or obtuse dono chalega. Right. Basically, not acute angle branching. Which of them is thicker? I think that mnemonic also everyone knows. Mucor is mota like a ribbon. That is again a previous year question that you have. So what did I say? Mucor is mota. Mota means it's going to be thicker and like a ribbon shaped structure that you see and that finishes off all of your differences. Here what you had was 45 degree acute angle branching with dichotomous branching. Classical case of Aspergillus. Does aspergillus involve the pulmonary system like uh, this patient is having some element of allergy, also having asthma. So can uh, aspergillus result in allergies? What is that condition known as? Yes, what is that condition known as guys? What is A, B, P, A? So you will say ma'am, this is referred to as a case of allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Very much possible that aspergillus causes allergy. Ho sakta hai. Other than that, can it involve the nose, rhinitis, nasal polyps, discharges? Yes, very much possible. Clinically be fit ho hai. Perfect. Now let's move on to question number two, which I feel is... Another very easy one, but a famous PYQ. It's come three, four times. So I believe you should be able to answer this. What is the answer out here?
ओके सो आई गॉट सम आंसर्स आउट हियर एंड यू से बी सो रोज रोज देखते ही मैम वी हैव आंसर ऑप्शन नंबर बी सो दीज आर गोइंग टू बी द गर्ल हु इज वर्किंग इन अ फील्ड वेर देर आर रोज बुशेज हिंट नंबर वन फर्स्ट शी हैज एन अल्सर और फर्स्ट शी हैज अ पस्ट ड्यूल दैट प्रोग्रेस टू एन अल्सर देन दैट फॉर्म्स अ नॉट ड्यूल बट हाउ इज इट स्प्रेडिंग इट इज स्प्रेडिंग अलॉन्ग द लिम्फैटिक ड्रेनेज सो वन थिंग आई नो दैट आई एम डीलिंग विद सम काइंड ऑफ अ cutaneous disorder and that is spreading in the lympho version that is going to be lympho cutaneous disorder and the fungus which is going to have that kind of a lympho cutaneous spread is sporothrix let me tell you more about it so first and foremost look at this what is sporothrix shenkai sporothrix shenkai is the name of the organism i've already told you it causes rose gardner's disease and how does that disease spread it spreads in the direction of lymphatic drainage anything else related to rose yes if you look at this this what is this stain guys why is this looking like a blue color stain lactophenol cotton blue blue tells me lactophenol cotton blue can you see this flowery arrangement over here can i say this shows you rosettes of conidia so everything is re related to roses over here always remember rose gardner's disease shows you rosettes of conidia and lymphocutaneous can you see one lesion second lesion third lesion how the lesions are spreading gradually so it is a lymphocutaneous disorder what is this in the center i think everyone has answered it if you look at this right in the center you will see there is a round central dot and then there are some pink pink uh, projections around it making it a star so what is this entire body known as this entire body is referred to as the star body that is the asteroid body but what is in the center of this body what is this dot in the center this is looking like a cigar why will you say this is a cigar this is not looking like a cigar this is a cigar body but what orientation is this cigar is usually something you would expect uh, something like uh, this from my end like for example if i say cigar you would expect cigar should look like this i am saying the cigar has been shown like this it's a dot rather than this orientation this orientation has been shown so you have a cigar in the center and you have an asteroid body around it but what is asteroid what is this pink pink material actually there this ma'am this pink pink material that you've drawn around it this is an antigen antibody reaction very much correct all of you have given me the correct name for it antigen antibody reaction is known as the splendor hopley phenomenon so what you see around it is the splendor hopley phenomenon is there any other organism that can also show you the splendor hopley phenomenon is is seen by two organisms in entire uh, microbiology one of them splendor hopley phenomenon is going to be by sporothrix and the other one is going to be yes any bacteria actinomyces actinomyces can also show you splendor hopley phenomenon but for splendor hopley you just need to know this one chota sa table out here okay so coming back sporothrix shenkai rose gardner's disease rosettes of conidia asteroid body is noted cigar body is noted and the spread is going to be lymphocutaneous coming back you had a lymphocutaneous spread and you had the rose history classical question settled okay because we are doing lot of images also today i've got you another photo this is all correlated so this you understood ma'am this is looking like a star everything is looking like a star so star matlab you are talking about asteroid bodies and you just told me that asteroid body is going to be seen in sporothrix shenkai what is the other asteroid body seen in there's another star on the right this star is referred to as sarcoidosis so how do i know in the paper whether they've given me the star related to sporothrix or the star related to sarcoidosis very good i've got the answers sporothrix sporothrix is ma'am rose gardeners rose gardener will always roam around out, outside gardening to outside hoga na so this is an extracellular star the star that you see is outside whereas in sarcoidosis it is an intracellular कहा है सेल लुक एट दिस बिग सेल ओवर हियर इज दिस अ जायंट सेल ऑफ कोर्स बिकॉज इफ आई गो बैक टू माई पैथोलॉजी आई नो दैट सार्कोइडोसिस इज अ ग्रैन्युलोमेटस डिसऑर्डर ग्रैन्युलोमा मतलब इट इज गोइंग टू शो मी जायंट सेल्स एंड आई कैन सी दैट द स्टार इज प्रेजेंट इन साइड द जायंट सेल सो रिमेंबर द डिफरेंस बोथ ऑफ देम द स्टार्स आर सीन इन एस एन एस stars are seen in sporothrix and sarcoid but in sporothrix the rose gardener will be roaming around outside so it is going to be extracellular whereas sarcoidosis is going to be intracellular that's your story and your photo done okay let's move on to 
the next question out here question number three this is not an image based question one of the students had uh, told me to include this in the uh, next uh, session that is why i've got it so you need to tell me what is the correct match and this could have multiple options also so you need to tell me out of a b c d which are the ones which are correct don't give me a single answer give me all correct or not okay so I have started getting individual answers, but I feel there are more than one correct that I see over here. Maybe you are not reading it carefully. Okay, so now I started getting some combinations also. Actually, there's okay B, C, D. Finally, so let's talk about it. You just need to. This is a Ratta question. Which is the disease which is gonna have a tri-nucleotide repeat? And B, C, D. Now I started getting great. So let's talk about it. See, this is the most blunder wala first option which no one can get wrong fragile x syndrome no fragile x syndrome is not ctg fragile x syndrome is cgg and this i shall never ever forget this is to like common sense fragile x syndrome cgg vaise rata hua now to this cgg i will change it into ctg what did i do i put a t in the center when will i put a t in the center the disease which has myotonic dystrophy t in the center so myotonic dystrophy t in the center that is ctg so ye to correct hai ma'am huntington disease we've always learned hunting in a cage exactly so cage matlab hunting is done in a cage cag repeats but cage ka spelling to cage hota hai what is e because this is the disorder which is going to occur in the exon this is exon wala disorder because everything else that i have written over here this is to do with intron this is also to do with intron this is also to do with intron the only exon wala disorder is going to be hunting in disease coming to fredrick set exia this is also right how did i learn it g a a gana friend gana ga raha hai friend fredricks gana ga raha hai g a a so ultimately i realized ma'am all of them were correct all of these are correct the only one which was not correct was actually the first one so correct mein kya kya options aaya what is your answer for all those who told me b c and d you got it right yes the only incorrect one that you had over here was option a this is a lot of the recent pattern that has come where they are telling you to select more than one options in i n i in neat in f m g all these kind of questions are coming this is not that they are giving you information they are making you spend more time on every question so that you don't don't have one option and life becomes a little tougher for you so that was question number Three settled. Now let's go to question number four, which is a lengthy question, but again I believe it's an easy one. Okay, so here you have there's a forty-eight year old man who's complaining for difficulty in swallowing. So this is a surgery question actually. Patient says uh, he feels uncomfortable no matter what he eats or drinks. He's also lost five kgs in two months. A febrile vitals are normal. Barium study with esophageal manometry is performed and the results are obviously over here. I don't think anyone's reading this also because you will say, ma'am, as you were reading it, I really did not pay much attention because this barium study out here which you've shown. is so characteristic for a bird beak appearance that my diagnosis gets so easily made from this barium study so bird beak appearance or barium study perfect esophageal manometry ka results kya tha esophageal manometry showed you a very high pressure at the lower esophageal sphincter yes i can see the pressure that is why the lower esophageal sphincter is so narrow over here is constricted over here which is the mic so this was all path where does it come to micro what is the infection or the etiology that can result in it it is associated with trypanosoma cruzi now i want to go into a little bit of microbiology and ask you that what is the disease caused by trypanosoma cruzi and tell me the vector tell me these two things and we are settled because we know that clinically this was a case of achalasia cardia this is a case of achalasia cardia and exactly what i see in achalasia cardia is number one the bird beak appearance the lower esophageal sphincter is constricted and trypanosoma cruzi causes it if no someone said um, Yeah, I've got the right answers now. So Chagas disease, exactly. So what do we have? Trypanosoma cruzi causes Chagas disease, and what is the bug that causes it? I've given you a hint. It is the triatomine reduvid bug. It is a triatomine reduvid bug that is going to result in this. I hope everyone's okay with this micro path. Ye yaad aa gaya. There's no. Ah, uh, yeah. Someone said it is also known as the kissing bug. Yes, nocturnal bug, kissing bug. Again, all of these are right names of triatomine reduvid. 
red bar perfectly right this causes something not only uh, you know what happened ultimately my macrolasia cardia ho gaya so this part is constricted but what has happened to the rest of the esophagus it got dilated so has it resulted in mega esophagus yes it results in all mega mega stuff it will result in mega esophagus it will result in mega colon these all mega mega stuff you are right dr akshar mega esophagus mega colon even carditis you are right that is going to be there meanwhile i've got someone i was waiting for this it's been very long no one's asking me for pdf so mujhe aisa fomo ho raha tha fomo of the pdf pdf will be available of rr that's of a different platform that will be available on june 30th okay chalo this question is done question number 5 coming up your way question number 5 tells you about okay there's a factory worker who presented with complaints of abdominal pain diarrhea and weight loss hemoglobin is 9 anemia to pakka hai mcv is coming out okay mcv kya hai 88 to answer to sabne bata diya ma'am ye to pehle se itni baar we have seen this image na we know from pyqs tell me some normal values hemoglobin to 9 hai anemia undoubtedly is present mcv is 88 what is the normal mcv that we guys have studied in pathology it is between 80 to 100 femtoliters so mcv also is anemia hai but it is a normocytic anemia i can say this is a category of a normocytic anemia the size is coming out to be normal okay small intestinal biopsy has been shown and now another hint small intestinal biopsy has been shown so in most of the cases this is going to be the duodenum right which of the features is shown over here so now when i look at uh, the options many of you marked giardia which is perfect some of you also marked celiac disease are you in a way correct because if you read about duodenum and if you read about uh, duodenum affected by celiac disease maximally correct hai intestine wise you are correct but when you go on to the diagram can you see this organism over here celiac disease is not caused by an organism celiac disease uh, is you know is an uh, is a genetic disorder gluten wala disorder what is this organism that you see over here this is a case of giardia lamblia let me show you a better picture have a look at this why is this the intestine first and foremost what are these cells that are telling me that this is the intestine these are the goblet cells and apart from that what is this structure this is the structure you will say ma'am giardia lamblia to aisa dikhta tha you used to call it that angry old man it used to look like a bearded old man it's not looking like this why so because please note i'll come to other options also guys just hang on for a minute abhi ke liye why is it giardia because giardia is staring at me i can't even think of anything else because giardia is on my face right now it's so evident but what you see over here is going to be a man jiska front view dikha you are seeing the front view over here in microbiology you see the front view i tell you that uska side view dekho if you will see the side view you are seeing the pathology photo can you see the side view it's looking like a sickle so giardia number 1 is going to look like a sickle shape. organism number 2 where is it present it is present in lumen it is a luminal organism and if in microbiology so lumen mein tha yes ma'am i can see it is inside the lumen of course and if they would have asked you what is the motility so we all know that the way you write giardia lamblia we call it a girta hua leaf we call it girta hua leaf so it is referred to as which motility it is referred to as falling leaf motility someone in between had written twitching motility no that is why i'm giving you this mnemonic guys girta hua leaf is falling leaf motility for giardia twitching is t for t in case you got confused earlier twitching motility is t for t that is trichomonas so now you don't have to get confused in any way between these two motilities okay no confusion going forward coming all the way back giardia lamblia to is obvious because i don't see anything else it's like staring on my face what are the other options endamoeba i think for endamoeba histolytica you guys i'll make a chota sa diagram kuch missing hai for endamoeba histolytica some ulcer should have been there flask shaped ulcer i don't see any flask over here so why should i call it endamoeba it is ruled out then people were very much obsessed with celiac disease that ma'am celiac disease bhi to ho sakta hai celiac disease can show you a lot of things agreed but celiac disease will not show you giardia lamblia na celiac disease bhi duodenum mein hota hai celiac disease can also have abdominal pain it can also have diarrhea it can also have weight loss agreed fully agreed but there's a reason that a histopath slide has been given to you so celiac disease mein ye kyun dikhega why will you see giardia 
cardial amblyopia not happening coming to this one whipple's disease this is not a case of whipple's either because guys whipple's disease may always say that you have to look out for one golden sentence and that golden sentence is it is caused by an organism na it is trophyrema whipplei how do you see trophyrema whipplei trophyrema whipplei is seen as pass positive macrophages in which layer ye to lumen hai Whipple's disease का डायग्नोसिस कहाँ होगा Whipple's disease का डायग्नोसिस विल हैपन हियर पास पॉजिटिव मैक्रोफाजेस इन द लैमिना प्रोप्रिया विल बी सीन दैट इज वाई इट इज नॉट अ केस ऑफ Whipple's disease. Repeating you and you can't change even one alphabet out of it. The stain will always be pass. The cells will always be macrophages. The layer will always be lamina propria. Till the time you don't see all these things together, you cannot make a diagnosis of Whipple's disease. I hope all the questions are settled for everyone. I can move forward. Going on to the next question. Perfect. Question number six in front of you. This is a gynae path question actually that we have. Listeria twitching. No, Dr. Devya. Listeria is tumbling. Listeria is tumbling motility. Okay. Question number six. Which of the following is or are features of endometriosis gynae path? Can you help me with this? Dr. Chani, celiac disease has microcytic hypochromic anemia. Yes, because celiac disease has iron deficiency, and iron deficiency is microcytic hypochromic. Chalo. Finally, coming down to this question, endometriosis. While many students would believe endometrial glands, endometrial stroma, ho gaya endometriosis, but the twist in the story is that these endometrial glands and stroma will bleed and anything that will bleed will result in the formation of hemosiderin also so the correct answer for the diagnosis of endometriosis is having all these three things so coming back what do i mean by a case like in uh, gynae you must have studied a lot about endometriosis because it's a very famous picture that i have got in front of you what is this this is a chocolate cyst and this chocolate cyst is something which they define for ovary isn't it chocolate cyst in the ovary and that is what is endometriosis so kya hota hai so for i'll make a very quick but a very very bad diagram that i have made for the uterus just <laughs> deal with it this is the uterus and then we'll make a uterus fallopian tube and ovary okay so now please note this is where the endometrial glands the endometrial stroma this is the endometrium this is where it should be now i'm saying the endometrial glands and the endometrial stroma are going to be endometrial glands and endometrial stroma are outside the uterus and you all know one of the most common sites is the ovary right and yahan par bleeding hoga endometrial glands and stroma will bleed so hemosiderin will also be there that is the reason because of the blood the color is becoming very very chocolatey it is nothing but old blood that is making the color very chocolatey so that is a case of three things have to be present and all three things have to be present for endometriosis hence your answer over here was One, two, three, all combined. This is important for um, NEET, FMG, all students. But for I and I C E T aspirants, I want to ask you: Is endometriosis now associated with two genetic factors, which I want you to know? What are the two genetic factors with which it is associated? One is going to be the P10 gene, and the other one is going to be the ARID1 A gene. P10 gene and ARID1 A. How will you learn this? P10. Let me give you a hint. Even for NEET PG students. P10 will always be related to everything associated with N means endometriosis endometrial cancer of the uterus of course endometrioid cancer of the ovary also to kuch bhi endometrioid likha hoga na endometriosis endometrial cancer over here endometrioid cancer in the ovary sab mein P10 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 will come Other than that, arid one a arid. I have learned ari as nari. Why have I learned ari as nari? Because all the nari related things show arid gene problem. Males me itna nahi hota, nari me hota hai. So you will say, ma'am, can it be associated with ovarian cancer, endometrial cancer, endometriosis? Yes. So all the nari related stuff is going to have arid gene. And P10 is endometrioid, so that is also settled. I hope you will remember these two genes. Although I said for I and I C T aspirants, but since everyone was listening, I'm assuming everyone will learn it. Okay, question number six is also there. Uh, doctor, someone, Doctor Shivam is saying endometrial hyperplasia. Yes, I said na everything related to endometrial disorders. And when I said endometrial carcinoma, so carcinoma ka precursor is endometrial hyperplasia only na. So P10 can be associated with hyperplasia also.
ठीक है चलो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू आई थिंक क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन लास्ट क्वेश्चन फॉर द डे एंड एन इमेज एसोसिएटेड विद दिस एज वेल दर इज अट इजी क्वेश्चन आई केप्ट फॉर दी एंड कॉन्फिडेंस बूस्टर माओकार्डियल इन्फ्शन वॉट आर यू गो नो यूज एज अ सोल्यूशन फॉर द डायग्नोसिस जल्दी से आंसर एंड देन यूर गुड टू गो we've got options clear cut option a ttc before i start explaining triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride give me the answers to all the others also when would i use 100% alcohol ma'am that is not a solution matlab that is just an alcoholic version you don't it's not a color it's not a stain okay when do you use orsine stain guys what is the use of orsine stain in pathology anyone who can help me and i'll tell you the full name the full name is orsine shikata stain the full name is orsine shikata stain and i'll today tell you three reasons or three uses of orsine shikata stain very very important so please note or as soon as they write or seen you have to think of an organism and that organism is the famous famous hepatitis b surface antigen hepatitis b surface antigen is or seen positive so or is going to be for organism next we come down to ce now when i say ce this will remind me of what ceruloplasmin copper wala factor na the copper carrying agent so ceruloplasmin is also or seen positive very very good and finally we come to in in will remind you of elastin that is what you have to know so in will remind me of elastin and that is how i will never ever forget the uses of orsin shikata stain ho gaya yaar or for organism ce for ceruloplasmin in for elastin so orsin stain ka to uses i have done what is this fourth one the fourth one is crystal violet hematology which bodies are stained with crystal violet i'll give you a hint these bodies are seen in g six pd deficiency anemia right g6 pd deficiency anemia is what yes which bodies hines bodies hines bodies are going to be the ones which are going to be staining with crystal violet so i've got all the other options also settled for you ab answer pe aate hain what is this a case of myocardial infarction what will i use for myocardial infarction here you go tptc triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride how many alphabets 1 2 3 4 so in how much time will this help me this is useful for the gross diagnosis of myocardial infarction if the patient has died within 4 hours so please remember within 4 hours of chest pain if a patient dies to four alphabets wala stain lagaoge that is tptc and please note tptc ka principle it stains ldh1 don't we know from biochemistry that heart has a lot of ldh1 right so look at this this entire area why is this looking so nice and brick red because this is normal this is normal this has a lot of ldh1 present that is why what color am i getting with tptc tptc has given it a brick red color because ldh hai to red color aayega versus when i come down to this area over here the remaining one this one is looking very very pale why is this looking very pale because this is a case of myocardial infarction all the ldh has gone cells have died ldh1 is not there so am i going to get a red color no with tptc i am going to get a pale color and that is how you do the diagnosis is that okay with everyone this was the question that they had asked you over here this is the case of myocardial infarction okay the seven questions of the day are done but i hope you all remember that uh, i had told you that in between i'll keep coming back with such short sessions there's no uh, you know there's no timeline or time table of these sessions these are just mid week or random confidence boosters that i keep coming up with a random bag of you know 5 to 10 questions average that we have and yeah which show first trop uh, trop i and trop t both doctor happy but trop i is more important and is more relevant in our sea so drop i would be the answer okay yeah so thank you so much for joining in and uh, of course in the coming week also i'll have one or two more short such uh, super short sessions where uh, we'll you know just randomly discuss which i feel is very important because you guys anyway do q banks which are in order topic wise subject wise chapter wise you need some random mixed bag of short sessions which can actually help you so yeah we we'll do that uh, dr sambhav noted i will be doing the e coli strains in the next class okay we'll definitely take it up great thank you so much study well have a great sunday and all of those who are following ipl so open your book alongside and also watch the match okay all the best